Intel takes a feature away, Linus takes away three channels, and the 9800X3D takes away its ability to work by exploding. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news like find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Friday, November 15th, 2024. We're gonna start off today talking about Intel changing up a few things on their Arrow Lake CPUs, which is that they are getting rid of the DLVR bypass mode that's on Arrow Lake CPUs, which is because Intel is saying that it was accidentally being misused. Now the DLVR allows the chip to regulate its power consumption by adjusting the voltage, making it so that it has lower power usage in various different situations. However, some motherboards allowed you to bypass that, thereby allowing you to get the full power out of your CPU in a lot of different scenarios. However, Intel is saying that that is an accidental misuse and that this is only meant to be bypassed in extreme overclocking scenarios, such as with sub ambient cooling. And so that is the only situation where they're going to allow it moving forward. This isn't the first time we've seen DLVR bypass though, that was available on Raptor Lake with the previous 13th, 14th gen CPUs. And now it looks like they're taking away this situation with Arrow Lake. So just kind of frustrating a few people out there who were potentially using this. Maybe you didn't know about it. I mean, I think according to our audience uh, comments, not many of you are picking up Arrow Lake CPUs in the first place, but this isn't necessarily something that's getting on people's good sides with removing that feature. But you know what comes packed with a ton of features? Today's video sponsor. Everyone loves tech and everyone loves wearing things. So wearable tech is the best of both, right? You know who really knows about wearable tech? Ringcon, the makers of the only smart ring to be crowdfunded through Kickstarter for over $4 million in 45 days and the sponsor of today's video. When Ringcon reached out about working together, we knew right away that Michael, our resident ring guy, was the perfect person to try this little guy out. And when I say little, I mean little, but in a good way. The Ringcon Gen 2 is the world's thinnest and lightest smart ring coming in at a minimum thickness of just two millimeters and weight of two to three grams. Compared to the previous gen, that's a 23% reduction in thickness. Now, unlike Michael's Apple Watch Ultra One, this is the first smart ring to provide sleep apnea monitoring. Thankfully, Michael's in the clear here, but having a ring monitor your sleep and provide results with 90.7% accuracy is a big deal for people with sleeping disorders. All of your health metrics and sleep data can be conveniently found in the RingCon app, which you use to enable your ring when you get it out of the box. Another feature that smart rings have over other bits of wearable tech is the absolutely insane battery life. Charging to 100% on the RingCon Gen 2 offers 10 to 12 days of battery life with 150 plus days of use when paired with the portable charging case. You might also be thinking, this ring sounds great, but I don't wanna have to take it off every time I wash my hands. And to that, I say, no problem. RingCon has made sure the Gen 2 is waterproof and dustproof, boasting IP68 protection, the highest dust and water resistance standard. This thing can even function at depths of up to 100 meters underwater. So if you dive or swim, your ring comes out ready to keep on trucking. And possibly best of all, every health tracking feature this ring has comes with no subscription. Not now or ever. Once you have your ring, your health data is yours to collect and keep. You can grab a RingCon Gen 2 smart ring for yourself today via the link in the description below. Right now, you can enjoy their special Black Friday sale and get a ring protector for free. Huge thanks to RingCon for sponsoring today's video. While RingCon is delivering its Gen 2, Windows is delivering its ARM ISO for Windows 11. You're now gonna be able to download it and make it so that it's easier to install Windows 11 on ARM PCs. This is something that's coming alongside the new Snapdragon and X Elite chips, as well as the rumored upcoming NVIDIA chip that's supposed to be based on ARM. It just makes it easier to get Windows 11 installed on these various different devices. But one of the things that could happen with this is getting Windows 11 installed on various different MacBooks, especially because Apple has said that they're not necessarily against installing new operating systems on their Apple Silicon. It's just that what from what they've said, the ball was in the court of Microsoft to get the support for that. So it's most just gonna be drivers at this point for all of that to happen. But we've already seen Linux get installed on various different versions of Apple Silicon. So now that the Windows 11 ISO is out, it should make it slightly easier for that to happen. And potentially with all of this ARM support that's happening, maybe in the far future, you know, three to five years from now, we could potentially start seeing desktops with ARM setup, which could mean a revolution in the Hackintosh market again. Maybe that could happen, who knows? But there's been a revolution going on in the laptop market, in case you haven't been paying attention, both AMD and Intel have dropped new CPUs that are more efficient, but also more performant. And AMD wants you to know that theirs 
is better at gaming than Intel. This is actually, it's kind of frustrating because we we have a video going live this weekend where we kind of did this exact same test of Intel's Lunar Lake versus AMD's new AI9 processors in terms of gaming, both the 365, the HX370 versus a Lunar Lake laptop. We kind of came to the same conclusion. So uh, if you could watch our video this weekend instead of just listening to this hot new section, but AMD obviously cherry picking results, also kind of talking about the best of the best saying that their laptops are up to 75% faster than Intel's Lunar Lake uh, gaming graphics that you have in both of these laptops, which we, we didn't test EA Sports F124. So, so we didn't see that high of performance, but we did find that AMD generally is better overall. However, there are plenty of good instances where you should still be using Lunar Lake. Battle Mage is still actually quite good. Intel stepped up to the plate with this generation. We didn't see as big of deltas as what uh, AMD's showing here, but the general vibe is definitely that AMD is roughly faster when it comes to these laptops that are coming out. Our video is gonna be launching this weekend. It's it's in editing right now uh, with Catlin. So you win some, you lose some. And Reese wants to win you some deals. So let's see what he has. Yo, welcome back to to Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. And surprise, surprise, I have a couple of those for you today. Starting off with this Logitech G203 wired RGB gaming mouse, which you can pick up for only $18.99 with the coupon applied, making it $21 off. But then next up, we have this Corsair RM750X, specifically the 2021 version. There is a new 2024 version with ATX 3.1, but if you don't need that, you can grab this 750 watt 80 plus gold fully modular power supply for only $79.99, making it $40 off. And then lastly, a firm favorite chair is the Cooler Master NR200P V2 Mini ITX case, available in white for only $85.99, making it $30 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Thanks, Reese. Well, if you're a fan of Linus Tech Tips and their various channels, you're gonna get a bad deal because it turns out that they shut down three of their various channels. Now, this is likely going to get addressed by Linus today on the WAN show. When that happens, I'm not sure if it will be, but from what we know, they shut down three of their channels and several members who are part of those channels have now departed from LMG as well. It's not clear if this is part of a mass restructuring by the LMG to figure out how to navigate new channels, if this is layoffs that's happening, is this the new CEO's vision being implemented or what's happening, but the three channels that are on indefinite hiatus as their community post put it are Game Linked, which has been around for roughly a year. They're saying that they're reworking the channel to bring the best content, so they're taking a break from uploading for a while. Not quite clear what that means, as well as Mac Address, which is their three and a half year old Apple channel, says that they are taking a break soon from uploading here for a while, which the for a while is kind of confusing because the person who ran this channel, Jonathan Horst, if you check out his LinkedIn, he no longer works for LMG, so they would have to find a new host and readjust there. Additionally, their 11 year old Tech Quickie channel is also going to be retooling and taking a break. But John Martin, the person who was responsible for a lot of the writing on Tech Quickie, also removed LMG from his Twitter bio, so it doesn't look like he's part of the team now either. So there's a lot of refactoring. It's not just the channels are taking a break and they're redoing things internally. It's they're taking a break and people have left the company. So well, obviously we don't know more than uh, what the public details are, which is that all of these channels are on indefinite hiatus. Linus will likely come out with new details uh, soon, but that's the situation with LMG and three of their channels. And let's talk about the situation going on with the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D. This king of gaming CPUs is having well, allegedly the same issue that the 7800X3D had, which is that they're exploding, they're popping in the motherboards, people are having burnt chips. And it's not just one person, it's been multiple people coming out with these details over the last few days. However, it, according to the internet sleuths who have been investigating this, it appears likely to be user installation fault rather than actual motherboard voltage issues. However, Steve from Gamers Nexus did contact the Redditor who posted this initially and it looks like he's trying to acquire the chip to find out the details with this just like they did with the 7800X 3D. So obviously wait for our Gamers Nexus deep dive moving forward. But according to the people who have been investigating this, it looks like if you could see that little broken bit of plastic, they installed the CPU wrong. There's multiple pictures showing that 
here you can see it's not quite slotted in properly, but here this is how a properly slotted 9800X3D is supposed to look and allegedly, according to the theory, because it's offset by a little bit, that's causing bad contacts, which is causing all of this issues. And it's not necessarily that the motherboards have a wrong setting, it's that the user didn't install it properly. Which is quite intriguing because I, I felt like AM5, especially with all the CPUs that I've installed, the 9000 series, the 7000 series, has a really, good installation mechanism. It doesn't have a lot of wiggle room like you find on Intel's 13th and 14th gen. Once you install the CPU, it feels like it's firmly snugly in there. So it's interesting that this is popping up. Obviously we have to wait for more details as a deep dive investigation is done on this. I wouldn't necessarily worry. And in fact, if you come watch our live stream this afternoon, we're gonna be building a PC, a 9800X3D for the newest member of UFD Tech. Uh, so I'm, I'm not worried about it on, on my side. And if it does happen, obviously we can RMA the CPU and move forward from there. I want to curious, have any of you who have picked up the 9800X3D seen any of this? Want to hear from you down below in the comments. And while we take a look at what you said yesterday on YouTube, we got Paul saying cutting the AMD GPU marketing and sales team might actually help sell their product. Yeah, they've not been, not been the best. Then Gengar saying, Microsoft wanting to acquire more studios after closing tons of studios that make great games is definitely one of the business decisions of all time. For sure, it is. And then someone's saying, AMD just needs to dominate $200 to $600 GPU market and they will have consistent growth. Their greatest hope is simply making products so cheap you can't not buy it. There's a problem with that, which is they have been doing that. Their GPUs in the $200 to $600 range is fantastic. In fact, we have a video going live tomorrow on what GPUs you should be buying right now. And guess what? AMD's the number one recommendation in that two to $600 window for our video. And they have that. And the problem is when you talk about they're so cheap, you can't not buy it, then how does AMD make money? And especially with the layoff situation where they're laying off 4% of the workforce, their biggest growth opportunities is what they're interested in. Lowering the price of your product is not a growth opportunity. It's actually making it harder for them to grow as a company. Whereas with this AI and data center stuff, they can make money hand over fist. They can raise the price on their product even if they don't deliver any extra value because all of these companies need to buy GPUs and invest in servers and make the largest uh, data centers known to man. And guess who gets more money for that? AMD does. And we got Sky saying, I'm tired of this AI crap. I appreciate the quotes, very, very respected, but sorry. It's just, it is what it is. It's, it's gonna it's gonna be around for a while. However, the good news potentially is that uh, you can see that Bitcoin's like right around $90,000 at least of the time of recording. I have nowhere to deal where it's gonna be uh, when this video comes out. But uh, that could potentially mean that all of the people who went in on this like AI money shoveling could potentially be uh, re-diverting into crypto money shoveling. So we could see the resurgence of NFTs or uh, all that kind of stuff. We could see more crypto companies pop up or AI companies converting into blockchain or blockchain AI companies, crypto AI NFTs now happening, coming to you sometime soon. Get ready for it. And Gonner Me Leggy is saying, I think the Steam Deck showed that portable consoles can be a smash hit, even if you don't have a plumber game. I would be more surprised if Xbox and Sony were not investigating handhelds. The, the Steam Deck's got the diver game. Dave the Diver. I mean, I know it's on other platforms, but that's, it's a great Steam Deck game. I just wanted a plumber, diver, occupations, good games. And Katie saying, the hot new set seems to be come some games of spot the differences. Today, the controller was replaced with the purple heart. The green M&M moved new items on the bottom shelves. Uh, that's not intentionally what we're doing. We've still been trying to build up this set, trying to get it to look and feel the way that I want it to. We did just get the Purple Heart, um, I made a video about this. This is um, Twitch's answer to the YouTube play button. This is for hitting 5 million hours watched on Twitch, which is absurd. I can't believe we actually hit that. So thank you to everybody who watches us on Twitch, but we didn't hit 5 million hours watched on YouTube until the middle of 2020 after I'd been making videos for five years. <laughs> that was after we hit 100,000 subscribers. That was, uh, I think we had, we were at like 60 million views at that point. And even now we're only at like 25 million watch hours on UFD Tech. So it's not like uh, we're exponentially past where we are on Twitch. So we got, we got this. I want 
wanted to display it on the shelf. This this is kind of cool. This is something that I think Kyler and I uh, built here. Reese obviously streams with us, but uh, the the streaming aspect where we could get this was uh, Kyler and I's brainchild. And I didn't get rid of the the controller. I just moved it to the other side. The Stadia controller's there. There's nothing new on the bottom shelves though. I didn't I didn't put anything new. I just sat up the magazine and the, the onion uh, painting from Catlin because that fell down. But as I get trinkets that I love and am affectionate towards and mean something to me, I'll add them to the hot new set. And uh, that's the plan. And I plan to be back on Tuesday. Again, no Monday episodes as I'm trying to uh, ease into new family rhythms with a fourth child imminently arriving. So uh, hopefully be back on Tuesday. If not, see you when I see you.